Lightning like Steve McQueen. I'm in a fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly. Better push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder. And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back. We are live. It is the Freight Coach Morning Show, the top morning show and transportation coming to you every single weekday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 10.30 Central, to break down some industry headlines, to provide some actual insight and in what you can do in this crazy fucking industry that we find ourselves in every single day. Um, most importantly, though, we're not here to uh, do anything other than talk about the realities of the transportation industry. This is brought to you by transportation professionals for transportation professionals. No one's trying to re you know, write a hit piece on my content because they think trucks look cool or anything like that. These are people who are active in the day-to-day -day and have some actual tangible experience to uh, to talk about. I'm going to bring my guest up right away. You guys all know her. Her name is Stacey Steen. She's the one who makes this show go around, and uh, she's the one at VHub who keeps everything uh, rolling over there. So, Stacey, what's up? Good to have you back. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. I think this is my third time on the show, so I'm honored. It is your third time, and it's you're equally as nervous every single time before we we go on and 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 talk. Which is funny because like when we're doing like our pre-show thing that we do every single morning, you you always got something to say, and then then you're, then you're live. You're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's like I right now I'm talking to just you, but then you have all your viewers, so like I just have to focus on that, right? But yeah, exactly. We do. We got Simon Jamal Jamal from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Good fucking morning, Sunny Sharma. He was on last Friday. Vitaly, that would be um, eleven thirty Eastern for you, sir. And Xavier, he's already here. Freight Coach Nation. I like that. I like that term, Freight Coach Nation. We should go with that. I like that. It yeah, has let's to it. So obviously, you guys are the ones who make this show possible. V Hub is a longtime supporter of this. I mean, it's like our. It's, this is literally our ninety seventh live show that we're already at here, which is wild. But this is where we are. That is amazing. Congratulations. The yeah. big hundred. Once you reach hundred, you have to have a mini celebration now. Yeah, I know. We'll we'll have to do that. We'll, we'll cheers orange juice or something. You know, that, that's about all we can do because it's Friday. We'll cheers coffee. I'm sure somebody out there is drinking coffee with Bailey's or with me at eight in the morning somewhere. There's no doubt in my mind. Sonny says good morning, uh, Lewis. What's up, brother? Dedicated trucking. He was on yesterday. Um, so Stacy, let's talk about what what do we got moving here right now? We got, uh, you know. Our, our, our typical. So like, what does this look like? I think like, you know, obviously I'm up here talking about this stuff every single day. How does a carrier like go on to V hub if they want to reposition this or how would a broker go on there and like actually get access to this? Yeah. So it's pretty simple. So as a carrier, broker, renter, whatever it may be, you go into vhubapp.com, you sign up if you don't already have an account. And with that, when you know we go through the approvals, you add all the documentation needed, you will then have access to the, um, the, the data, the whatever we have available um, on the platform. So essentially, you know, people usually ask like, hey, like how many trailers do you have available? And that varies per day. We could have trailers available for repositioning. We can have 50 one day, but then they're reserved quickly and it goes down to 25. So it fluctuates. So once when you know people are asking that question, it's it's hard to give an exact answer because it just fluctuates from day to day. But essentially, for example, this Paragold to Orting, Washington, if you have a carrier for that lane or if you are a carrier and need an empty trailer for that lane, these are brand new 2023 um, dry vans that need to go to Washington. So if you're leaving from Arkansas, you can put as many loads as you need into this repositioning. So you get paid 1550 for the repositioning itself and your loads, your freight along the way, you can add as many, you know, as many loads as possible. And it just has to get there within the 14 days or if a carrier, you know, oh, sorry, if an asset owner adds a repositioning and gives you more days, yeah. then you just have to get that asset there within those days. So essentially they could go to, you know, pick up in Paragold or even over in this Glade Spring, Virginia location, they could take a load from Virginia up to Chicago and then Chicago up to Seattle, as long as it's up there in that 14 day period. It's not like it have to grab it 
out of Virginia and then bring it directly to Washington. It's just a lot in that time frame, and then they get paid the fifteen fifty to do that, right? Exactly, fifteen fifty, whatever freight you're putting in there, whatever load you're getting paid out. So, Chris, like you mentioned before, it just offsets some of the fuel costs, offsets yeah. these costs, offsets whatever it may, you know, that carrier or renter or repositioner may need. No, definitely. And I think, you know, it, obviously it's like with them being brand new, that's always a plus, you, you know, you know, you're not walking up to something. Cause like, and then another thing, like for furthermore, for those individuals that are out there who are like, what would it like, what's the condition of the trailer look like? Are you, are you guys out there actively inspecting these or the, like the trailers, like we get pictures and everything that like, we know that they're roadworthy, right? Yes. So what happens is as an asset owner who is a member of VHUB, they'll add their equipment to the um, so with photos, some of them do have photos, some of them don't, but they'll usually add the specs. So, you know, we've had requests for Stacy. I need a reefer with a roll up door, but it needs to have a flat floor. I cannot take another reefer without a flat floor. Yeah. So these are things and, you know, we are always here to assist. So if we have someone who needs a specific trailer, a specific type of trailer for their, for their load, you can always you know, reach out to myself, reach out to Xavier, see what's available, because we also have the resources to go out and ask our current, you know, asset owners, hey, do you have this? What, we have someone who needs this. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. And uh, speaking of these Florida to Milton, yeah. so we actually have a, quite a few leaving from Florida. These are yeah. reefers, and we have some going to see in New York and some going to Milton. So what's interesting about this is that the ones that are going from Florida up to Messina, New York, the owner has allotted 14 days for that specific repositioning. Um, and for the ones going to Milton, Ontario, so cross border, he has allotted 21 days. So you have an extra, you know, seven days to get that over to Milton, do whatever you need to do within that time frame and just get it there within the 21 days. I like it. I like it. And, you know, normally this is the point where I say reach out to my friend Stacey Steen and Xavier Camp. Stacey's right here, you guys. Now you guys could have put a face behind it and you know build up a little bit of that familiarity because that's what it's all about when you're working with people out there is you know i i personally love talking to people i might be one of those old school individuals that likes picking up the phone or meeting people in person as opposed to hiding behind a keyboard um but we have app talk you guys hit them up and uh speaking of that that was our 97th live show this is also the 97th reminder for everybody out there that there's a truck parking issue in this industry as well as a facilities issue that we are seeing out there in the market and i do see both sides of the fence my man lewis who was on yesterday talked about how everybody needs to do better in this equation and he he, he would see how a lot of that would change but again this is just a daily reminder because i don't do this for clicks in in vanity metrics you guys i do this until there's meaningful change out there um, also the, uh, daily reminder or slap in the face of the fact that diesel is still at 490 a gallon that's out there right now. It's still up a dollar, almost dollar 60 year over year overall. I get all that information from the EIA, you guys, EIA.gov. Um, yeah, check it out. You guys, all of this information is very valuable to your customers and everything else, because frankly, you, you know, why we're quoting things, you know, you need to know how, how to incorporate a fuel surcharge and all that stuff in there. So, um, you want to break down some articles? Yes, let's do it. I'm excited. This one specifically I'm excited about, but I'll let you know. We're going to lead in with this one from fleetowner.com, and it is the tech tools for keeping track of your trailer fleet. Um, I think I'm a massive proponent of technology, you guys, and everything else, and especially if it keeps your equipment safer, it keeps the driver safer, and then, frankly, it helps you keep track of everything that you have because – that's the benefit of like trailer tracking and everything else that's out there is because I mean, if you have a thousand trailers, like how are you, are you, are you just gonna have an Excel spreadsheet and just know where everything is, you know? So like, cause you were, when, when you started out in your career and everything, Stacy, you, so you were at, was it Ryder prior to this? So like you've been around this stuff for a long time. How, how are you seeing from like your experience out there about like the benefits of having trailer tracking available um so if i'm relating it to my experience you know at the previous company i was at um, we didn't deal a lot with trailers however we did deal a lot with you know units power units 26 foot um dry boxes anything that that needed to come in for maintenance so i was an operations manager there and just you having those tools the gps to locate where our truck was 
was essential because you know some people don't bring in their tr their truck or their tractor to get it the maintenance done and it needs to be done for the trailer sorry for now i'm mixing up my trailers and tractors but for our power units to run smoothly the maintenance needs to be done and that was essential uh we could locate exactly where it was and if we needed to go pick it up and bring it back to have the maintenance done we would because we've sent hey we need this in second warning third warning and then final warning um, so in regards to that aspect, personally, I think it's it's one of the greatest things to have, whether on a trailer, on a power unit, whatever it may be. It just, especially for, you know, the asset owner, it just assists you in your business. We have so much going on in our day to day to keep an Excel sheet. It helps, but not as much as just having, being able to go on, log on to whatever it may be, or com, what, yep. uh, tab, whatever it may be to say like, okay, this is where it is. I don't have to keep this Excel sheet, keep opening, updating, color coding it. So I, I just, because it's also like, you know, because it goes on to talk about, obviously about visibility. I know visibility is a massive trend um, out there. You have your off the shelf technology and everything else, but I also think of it as, it's like, in terms of like an efficiency aspect of it, because a lot of these facilities, like if you're going in there and you have a drop trailer, you know, how does, how can you help accurately pinpoint where that trailer is located? If a yard, you, you know, you're a power, you, you go in, you drop that trailer, the yard jockey takes it and drops it wherever. Um, this helps the shipper, I feel like, or receiver operate more efficiently by having this software out there so they can see exactly where it is. And again, it's like, and it's not just that though, it's also about maintenance and everything. Having that technology on there because again, preventative maintenance is everything to a, a fleet, whether it's a truck, trailer, or hell, even your personal vehicle. Doing those little things are so key to and uh, ensuring the longevity of your, of your uh, investment because that's what it is. You know, like this is just a straight up investment. 100%. And it's funny because I bought a new car recently and they told me if you do not have a GPS on this car, you will not get insured. So it's like, it's just, you know, having that visibility of if the trailer is lost or stolen or whatever, it, it just helps. And like you said, for shippers, receivers, it helps locate the trailer, you know, with carriers who are picking up trailers and then just dropping in because they're not, for example, bringing it to where it has to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, where is this trailer? Or, you know, a lot of trailers are white. I love white, no decals or decals, you pronounce that differently, but there are no stickers. So it's like, okay, which trailer am I picking up? Is it yeah. this one on the east side of the yard or the west side? Like just being able to pinpoint exactly where that trailer is, I, in my opinion, is just essential. And it's just, I guess, more organized and, you yeah. know, it just provides clarity for both ends or all parties involved. No, definitely. And, you know, it goes on to say in this article that uh, commercial tracking systems for uh, several trailer segments consist of two elements. First is a battery or solar power device attached to the trailer itself that emits a GPS tracking signal. Um, and then the second part of the system is the software on the receiving end, which can translate the signal from the trailer tracker graph or graphically onto a map showing the exact location, whether the trailer is stationary or moving, and in some cases, whether it's to a tractor. Many of these devices utilize geofencing. Uh, which is obviously is an invisible barrier around uh, selected areas. Um, and then, you know, it also goes on to say that uh, during a, a conversation with Lena over Jessica Smith, she's a VP of uh, customer data insights for Philips Connect um, and a 25 year of Warner Enterprises said that, uh, um, okay, let's, okay, hold on. I'm just, it goes, it lists off like 17 different titles with her. She is a clearly very, um, has a lot of accolades in there. In her job um but you know it goes on that obviously it's like you know connecting to the right trailer and the right tractors to you know eliminate that because that's another thing too is it's like what if you go in there to a drop trailer facility and you're with a large fleet and again like use warner for example warner has the exact same looking trailers essentially across their fleet what if the driver snags the wrong trailer and then they're 150 to 200 miles down the road and it's like oh hey you got to return that has the wrong product in there and everything else so or it's going to the wrong location and everything so again i think like anything to make your operations run more efficiently that's why I'm, I'm i am a massive fan of technology and where things are going because it's like anything we can do to help it run more efficiently anything a fleet could do especially a small fleet which makes up 97 percent of the trucks on the road to help them run more efficiency efficiently if they are adding to their trailer pool you know if they are going from 20 to 70 trailers or whatever that looks like now that's going to help them run a more efficient operation and obviously efficiency in the for the most part 
equates more profitability out there. So again, you guys, that one's from fleetowner.com. You guys hit it up. All the article links that I break down are going to be up there in the Freight Coach YouTube channel as well as the Freight Coach podcast audio only replay. Uh, do your own research as well. You guys check all that stuff out. And again, subscribe and share while you're there if you could. Tim Breckenridge, this guy's fantastic. He said he had a call with you last week. The secret's out now. They wanted to keep this for themselves. Tim's great. I love that guy a lot. Um, Tim, we need to jump on a call, bro. It's been a minute. Uh, Xavier, lean into this topic. Hank Miller uh, agrees with that. Chris Andrews, good morning. Um, big news yesterday that came out about an acquisition that happened. Heartland Express acquires CFI truckload business for $525 million. Um, It's a big thing because uh, Heartland was number 66 in the overall rankings last year, and uh, they acquired their non-dedicated truckload business as well as the Mexican entities under CFI Logistica in a $525 million deal. Um, the enterprise, the value of the transaction, which said it's its largest it's ever done, is calculated on a cash-free and debt-free basis subject to certain adjustments. The deal is expected to close in the third quarter. Um, CFI is exactly what uh, has exactly what we look for as we expand and sale a respected and recognizable brand, capable management, safe and experienced drivers, strong asset base, and a complementary terminal network. Um, I think it's uh, a solid play by them. I, I think what also stuck out to me was that they only bought um, the the non uh, excuse me they're, they're not buying the brokerage or the dedicated version of this as well so i like i always see these acquisitions and again i'm not an m a expert by any stretch of the imagination but you know they talk about complementary networks out there so i almost wonder if heartland has had a um an increase in contracts that came out from their dedicated customers and they needed that additional fleet and obviously as we all know right now you can't exactly go out there and buy 1500 uh trucks and trailers at the top of a dime so this might have been the strategy. Again, this is just my assumption after reading this article. Yeah. Um, I mean, what what kind of like popped out to me in this whole, in this article was um, the fact of the cross-border, um, you know, the cross-border with uh, what they, when they bought out is just, yeah. I find that a lot of, there's a lot of, well, for me personally, so I was at, you know, we're in transportation, but not really with trailers. So in terms of cross border, for me, it was like, I've learned a lot being at VHub the past eight months, whatever it may be, almost a year now. Yeah, I learned a lot and I, I did my own research in terms of cross border. So, you know, when you're, when you're buying out a company or whatever it may be, who has that expertise, that also alleviates, in my opinion, just some of the extra work or whatever you may need to do for that specific, you know, category. So I don't know, that's what kind of popped out to me in this article it was it was just interesting. No, it, that's the thing too. Like I also thought it was, I don't know if the strategic uh, aspect of it was to buy the uh, Mexican entities that are underneath that because that is a, obviously I think with everything that's going on in the ports and everything else, there has been a resurgence of North American manufacturing and everything else and coming in and out of Mexico. I think it's like, it, it's a solid play because I personally feel like Mexico is going to be the first return while ever like when it manufacturing returns from China for all the delays and everything else that people are seeing, Mexico is going to be their first thing while they're building up the infrastructure here in the United States, because that's my long-term hope of all of this is it brings more and more manufacturing jobs back to America. And then that, cause that's only going to benefit uh, Mexico and Canada as well, because obviously Canada is our, essentially our biggest trade partner overall. And one of those things don't quote me on if it's an import or an export. I don't have the information in front of me, but I know that we do a substantial amount out there. So again, it's like bringing that back in and having that open trade pipeline essentially is key. And it's, it's good to see, you know, it's good to see. I like it because, you know, if you Google Heartland Express, they're from a, a little town in Iowa called North Liberty, Iowa. And I just like, I, I just like seeing those things from small towns popping up across and they're turning into massive successes overall. Um, that article was from ttnews.com, Heartland Express to acquire the FI truckload business, which, you know, it's, it's, I personally think that this is just the start of, well, it's kind of like the, another of the many of the M&As that have happened, mergers and acquisitions has been key. And I personally think that, you know, again, this is just off, on, not based off of any specific reports, but I think M&A is going to be hot for probably the next 12 to 18 months. I think it's going to be huge because anytime you see market fluctuations, there's always a natural contraction in the market. People are going to leave the market and everything else. And then some people 
might have been in business for 40 years and I'm like, I'm fucking over it. I just want to sell and be done. So but that's what my gut is telling me out there. Um, Garrett Bowers, good morning to you as well. They use uh, V Hub and it's been great so far. I love seeing that. Um, last and final article, the third one. And I saved this one for last because I am obviously, it's no secret I'm a former freight broker and have an absolute love for this industry. But this one comes from Freight Waves. Uh, freight broker sentiment shaking heading into the back half of 2022. Retaining customers remains a major concern for brokers in the latest freight recession. <sighs> um, I think that retaining customers is always a broker's got to be their top priority. You know, for, for me, you know, it, it's it's always got to be because like I, I'm of the Stacy that getting customers is the easy part. When you think about it in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people are like, oh, fuck that. Sales is hard. I'm not saying sales is easy, but if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, Cold calling, soliciting business, and onboarding customers is the easy part of the transaction because the real work will always start the first time you're handed that rate confirmation. The first time that BOL comes over to you and says, pick it up here and deliver it here, that's when the real work will always start. And I think that once you actually look at the life cycle of what it takes to onboard a lot of customers of substance, and I'm not, ta I'm not saying that this is across the board cut and dry, but like when you invest months of prospecting and you flights to their, their facilities to meet them in person and everything else, customer retention should be the top priority for a lot of brokers. Follow closely with carrier retention. It's, it's, it's in one being importance. Obviously, um, you need one without the other, and I get that, but I also feel like it's got to be taken with an equal thing because anybody, you know, I'll use Tim Breckenridge for an example here. He's been in the industry for a long time, just like me. He knows the importance of this. We had we've had a conversation at length about that exact same topic, and you know, to me, it's like how do we how do we get that and that finding that balance and everything else. Um, but it, it goes on to say that they surveyed 166 freight brokers and shows that there's pessimistic about acquiring and retaining customers. Um, you know, it goes on to say landing new shippers and retaining existing ones are the top of mind of freight brokers. Now, I think if, if it is now, you're, you're fucking way behind the bell curve. You know, um, I think that for a lot of us who are nervous about losing customers, it's because they were fucking people over openly over the last two years in the market. They were taking advantage of the market. They were providing shitty service. And now their cards are being called. And I think that's where a lot of people are. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've been asked, okay, hey, what is your priority previously? And they're like, okay, is it boss, customers, employees? And, you know, obviously employees have to be happy to make the customers happy. And it's just, I think customers' re retention is just very important. Once you, you establish that initial relationship, everything you do afterwards is key. You, you have to make sure that you are there for your customer, and you know, it is, it does go both ways in a certain sense. It's like, is that open communication, that transparency, but keeping a customer and the customer service you provide is just, is essential. And you know, a personal experience of mine is I have a dealership for my car down, down the street, two minutes. I do not go there because I do not enjoy the customer service they provide. I will drive 25 minutes to go to a place that, you know, treats me well. They're happy to be there with respect, does good service on my car. And it's just, it goes to show how much, you know, the, how like just good customer service goes a long way and retention and also in the initial, initial steps of gaining that customer. No, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, it's like, I, I think about it like this, like I, I tried, you know, I, as I've been building up my company in, in everything else, I always try and say like, how, like when I'm out there in the public and I'm spending my own money in the public, like why I buy from certain companies. And it is, it has a lot to do with that. And I also take that though and I apply it to why do my clients work with me? Why, why do the advertisers that I have work with me? And I think like it is that overall experience. It is that customer service. It is that partnership that needs to be formulated, you know? Um, and then, you know, cause it, it's, it goes on to talk about contracted rates and how, Contracted originally down 3% over the last six months. And again, I think that 
there is it's it's normalizing out there in the freight market right now but i think that contracted rates aren't going to be like rebids are inevitable they're going to happen i don't know when rebid season is going to really kick in i i know it's probably already happening out there but i think that for me it's about you have to play the market for what the market is and that like contracts in transportation um really are really worth the paper that they're printing on, you know, because when a when market shift happens, I mean, it's a business's fiduciary responsibility. All right. They get a lot of upward pressure. But again, when you have those partnerships in place, you're, those, those uh, shippers, they're out there fighting for you. They're going to keep you in line. They're not going to force you to drop your pricing. They're not going to, they're the, at all, actually. There's going to be somewhat of a change, but it's not as drastic as a lot of people think. And um, for me, you know, because it does, you know, talk about in this article about expecting the freight contract market to move down further over the coming months. Um, and the spread between spot and contractor race is just too wide to continue much longer. And, you know, it is, it is going to reach that point. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. I don't know when it's going to be an all out rebid. I just don't think it's going to be as drastic as what we've seen in the past where there, because like when, when the gap is as wide as it is out there between a contractor rate and a spot market rate, in my experience, when customers do rebid, they know that the spot rate is not sustainable. They're not going to come out there. But like in past markets, though, the gap wasn't as wide. So therefore, they're going to be like, this is all hypothetical. Don't fucking come to me and say, oh, that's bullshit price, everything else. This is just a hypothetical example. Normally, the spot market or the contract rates at $3 a mile, and the spot market rates at $260 a mile. So they're going to look, while that stability is in the market, they're going to look for that rebid and they're going to essentially say, you got to come down to 265 to 270 a mile to win this business still. That's what they would do. But now, with it being as wise as it is, I think that almost plays into providers' favors. Is Are they going to be looking for reprieve? Of course they are. It's just not going to be as drastic as what it normally would, where you're, I don't think a 30 cent per mile dip. 30 per, 30 cent rate per mile dip is going to be even be in the cards or even a topic of conversation because capacity is still volatile you know and that and that's just the overall market uh case as a whole um it goes on to say you know to kind of end up with this article you know it says where do we go from here the only certainty we can point for the freight markets in the second half of 2022 is the uncertainty um inflation inventory consumer borrowing and you know it goes on to the best of action stay focused on your customers find ways to add value and maintain your pricing power and keep developing those carrier relationships. Um, you know, again, the article by Kevin Hill. I love Kevin Hill. He's a great guy. Um, and it's just, again, it, there's just a lot of, I think if, if you're a free broker right now and you are uncertain about your future, it's because you've been fucking people over. I, I personally think that that's, that's just what my sentiment is on, on that. And again, uh, that article was from freightwaves.com. Uh, Josh Brawley, 100% agree. The first issue on the load is really when you build those relationships. Um, LinkedIn user, identify yourself. Two things in certain are for certain in life. One, made the majority sentiment in any survey. And two, Stacy needs to be a regular fixture on the freight code morning tree. Well, the people have spoken, Stacy, and apparently you got to keep coming back. I'll have to find my AirPods in that case because I was going crazy like you're doing before. So you've been looking for them the entire show. I see your eyes wandering back and forth out there. Where's my iPods? Where's my AirPods? <laughs> I'm not gonna be, uh, and uh, yeah, but no, thank you. And honestly, Chris, you know, you have a lot of experience in the freight brokerage, and I and I just learn every time I come on here. It's a pleasure to be on here. I learn every single day from you, and just it's it's great. So thank you for having me. It's always, of course. It, it's, it's, but that's what it's all about though, Stacey's it's all about the education because it, you know, to me, not everybody has access to information, nor do they know like where to start. And a lot of my sentiment towards a lot of this stuff has shifted in starting my own company and building up my brand and realizing like, holy fuck, there is, it is extremely hard to do this, you know? And then for anybody out there who's in business, it's like, I just feel like it's, it's my duty to put my experience out there at a level that people can actually apply to their business. Cause whether I'm a consultant or own my own fucking brokerage or whatever that looks like this information needs to be out there. Cause this only makes the industry better. You know, people leaving the industry and going out of business is not a good sign by any stretch of the imagination. Like this, like I just think that if people fail to put into context, how large the freight market really is, when you think about it, 900 billion fucking trillion gazillion dollars, whatever the fuck, 
people want to put out there. The largest provider literally has 1% of that at 15 billion. CH Robinson, I'm pretty sure is the largest overall. And they have like $15 billion market share. And that's not just like pure brokerage. That's, you know, including their entire portfolio of services. So to break all of that down, you guys, this market is very fucking large. There is a ton of opportunity out there. And if we can put information out there to raise the bar in this industry, to improve this industry, that's what's needed, in my opinion. So the honor is all mine to have you back, Stacey. And we'll, we'll keep having you back on so you can keep informing the public about trailer tracking and everything else and the importance of a lot of these things. So Stacey, how can anybody reach out to you, though? Um, LinkedIn, uh, you can personal message me, send me a direct message. You can also find us on vhubapp.com. We have a little chat box. So myself or my colleague will definitely respond. So LinkedIn, if you want to reach out to me directly or visit the vhub app and we'll be happy to, um, to respond and see what you guys need. I love it. That's it. <laughs> That's it for today. You guys, we will be back tomorrow, 8.30 in Pacific, 10.30 Central, uh, 11.30 Eastern for Vitaly because he needs to know the Eastern time on that one. But yeah, we guys will be back every single weekday. Just do me a solid, you guys. If you find value in this content, share the show. That's how all of this has continued to grow over these past couple of years. Every one of you who support this to share that out there to your network because if you see value in it, your network's going to see value in it as well. I appreciate you guys all so